What's up, pals and gals? It's your boy, the Wolf Gamer 25, and we are back once again for another riveting segment of Figure Friday. Oh, you know, it's that special time of the week where uh, we spend some quality time together. And, well, to put it in layman's terms, we basically about all things uh, figure, Funko, uh, merchandise, memorabilia related of all kinds, shapes, sizes, colors, you better believe. Anything in the source like that, you're going to find on this channel right here, especially uh, for my collector brothers and sisters out there. You know who you are, and um, I know most of you guys know me by, uh, I'm by my face and, of course, by what I do best. But um, before the holy moments, as you know, uh, we here at the Wolfpack, uh, we care about one another. We make sure that everybody is taking care of each other, especially you, because you are the lifeblood of this channel, and you help keep it going. So um, before we get into the... Uh, you know, good stuff of tonight, uh, please. If you haven't already, uh, do me boy a favor and uh, go get yourself something to drink, uh, get yourself a snack, or um, have something to eat if you haven't already, because um, once again, I want you guys to be able to take care of yourselves and uh, drink plenty of water and keep yourselves up, you know, especially during this pandemic that we're still in right now, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, do, uh, do please go and do that. I'll be right here waiting and, uh, you know, help yourself. And no, no need to worry about me, folks. I have me something to drink right here. Ah, boy, oh boy. Let me check that just messages. Okie dokie. Sweet, sweet. Okay. You guys doing good? I hope you guys are um, doing well during this pandemic because... I know that um, the numbers aren't getting any better out there, and um, I hardly ever watch the news, but uh, I did see that um, President Trump had um, contracted COVID. Uh, I mean, I'm not a big supporter of his, you know, but I don't really get involved in politics, but that's just me. You know, that's just me. But, um, you know, hey, I hope, I hope he pulls through, you know. Uh, let me go ahead and stretch real quick. Also, for those of you guys who are still under lockdown, uh, I hope that you're handling that well. I hope that you haven't lost your mind or anything, because that is essential, and um, I do care about you guys, as you know. But um, I hope that you get, uh, for those of you guys who are working out during in this pandemic, I hope that, um, you know, uh, you're following all proper safety protocols, you know, you're keeping your hands washed, keeping six feet apart, um, and uh, also... Uh, as I said in my last couple of previous streams, make sure you're wearing your masks, whether you're working or you're not working, whether you're going to the store or just hanging out with friends. You know, just take the safety precautions, folks. It doesn't it doesn't take a lot of effort. OK, come on. We're trying to help dwindle the numbers down. Right. Right. OK. But before. Before I move on, let me fix something real quick. OK. Uh, okay. Oh, but. um. I hope you guys have uh, had ample time. I hope that you are ready. And uh, for those of you guys just joining us, uh, welcome back. Um, and uh, as you know, um, at the through each and individ every individual stream, we usually like to start at the three minute marker. I know it's posted right here, but at the same time, I know it's also going to be down here in this timeline. So um, I hope that you're ready because uh, tonight's episode is actually going to be a showcase to uh, another great fandom that I am proud to say that I am a part of. And um, we are actually going to be taking a trip into that world of the the world of that galaxy that is far, far away. That's right, folks. Because um, tonight we will, it'll be a showcase to Star Wars, and uh, we will be introducing two new figures and a brand new Funko that I have procured, and um, they will be uh, all in a sort of sense to a um, recently, you know certain a recent certain saga that was um finished recently and i'm happy to say that a season two of said saga is coming back which i'm very very happy to say and um tonight we'll be featuring a uh, dual hand a dual lightsaber wielding badass a very well-known hunter and uh, well i'm actually happy to say an extremely talented little one who is all going to be down here at this channel tonight so, I hope you're ready. I invite you to sit back, relax, and um, enjoy, because as you know, it's just you, me, and the merchandise of tonight. So, I <sighs> hope you're ready, folks. Okay. So, first of all, 
first up, um, we're going to go ahead and um, introduce the uh, dual saber badass that I was talking about the first time. And um, this particular individual, uh, she was actually a former uh, yeah, Jedi Padawan learner of a very well-known mentor that I did mention in one of my previous streams. Now, um, she uh, hails from the world of Shil... Now, forgive me if I butcher this name. Shili... Shilai, S H I L I. It's that's how it's spelled, but I I apologize if I butchered it, and I I don't mean any harm by that. But um, she was actually discovered by another well-known Jedi master, and uh, his name was. Oh man, I apologize if I butchered this name. Plo Koon or Plu Koon, something like that. I I apologize, and um, in doing so, in his discovery of this Jedi. Um, it was where during that moment where he actually decided to um, adopt, well, not necessarily adopt her, but sort of, you know, take her under his wing. And um, it was where he had escorted her to the Jedi Temple to begin her training. Now, um, she is what's called a Togruta female. And I, I mean, I'm happy to say that I've seen her in... Um, a few of the animated series coming out of the uh, the Rebels, even the Clone Wars at times. And um, ladies and gentlemen, I would very much like to introduce a big Wolfpack welcome to Ahsoka Tano. That's right, folks. Ahsoka Tano. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm just very, I'm just, from the very minute, from the very minute I was able to procure this figure, I was so much taken by it due to the fact um because of her history, her history, you know, because um, as a child, um, she was mentored um, by um, the uh, Padawan. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. I'm rambling here, but I can't help it. I'm just I'm so taken by the figure and the character because of her story and everything. But um, let me see a little history about her before we get her out of there, before we get her out of imprisonment, is that um, she was the former Padawan learner of Anakin Skywalker. Now, um. It's true she was given uh, the following training during the events of the Clone Wars. And, oh my goodness, this thing has the devil's tape on it. Oh, and I forgot my opener, folks. I feel so embarrassed. Give me just a moment. Please, enjoy the music while I'm going. Whew! Okay, you miss me? <laughs> because I missed y'all. Okay, now, where was I? Oh, yes, getting her out of imprisonment. Don't worry, folks. I know the knife seems big. I know it seems dangerous. But over the years of opening figures very carefully, I have been learned to be very careful, you know? So no need to worry about me. Get her out of there so you guys can look. Oh, yes. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Let me put the box right over there. Ah, yes. Uh oh. Oh, that was the instructions. Who needs instructions these days? Wow. I'm already taken by the way she looks. Woo! Of course, get her weapons of choice out. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry about the noise. Right there. Whew. Okay, I'll give you guys a look. There we go. There she is, folks. Ahsoka Tano. If my camera would focus, you guys could see her properly. Hmm. That's very interesting. Oh, there she is. Beautiful. Now, um, as I said, folks, um, she's a Togruta female hailing from the Shilly planet. And um, as I said, she was given training during the events of the outbreak of the Clone Wars, where she was assigned by the Jedi Master Yoda to Anakin Skywalker. And um, who actually gave her the nickname as Snips. Now, I'm assuming that um, that has to do with either like her uh, her look or it could be, I mean, a completely different reason that I'm not even looking at. So I, I apologize, folks. And of course, as you can see, the patented dual lightsabers here. There we go. And I've seen her skill. I've seen how she does with these things. And she's she's epic, Adam. I'm not going to lie. One of the many uh, Jedi that I've come to respect, of course, is Easy Girl. Let me just see if I can not get them in her hands. Maybe. Dang, they got this one extra tightly closed. Just relax for me, Ahsoka. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help. Let me just get this saber in your hands. Beautiful. 
Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Don't let go. Don't let go. There you go. There we go. Let me give you guys a look at her. And um, one thing that I've already seen uh, about the costume that she's rocking is the fact that um, these little hooks right here, which I'm going to say when the um, sabers are sheathed or not out and about, which of course she can store them right here. And I wonder, I think the blade part comes off, but I didn't get a chance to explore that before, you know. Uh, but that's not to say that I don't love the figure. I love the fact that uh, she's fully posable. Um, this is the more uh, adult, uh, mature version of her. And, um, oh, dang. My apologies, folks. My hands are killing me. Ah. Now, um, a more history about her is the fact that um, during the battle of the uh, outbreak of the Clone Wars, it's the fact that um, even though she was assigned to Anakin, she was more eager to prove herself in you know more ways of course that she knew she she's trying to be a little bit more overbearing not overbearing but you know overexcited if i had to you know give a rough guesstimation you know because it's just the fact that um she wanted to prove herself at the battle of um christophsis i believe it was and despite anakin's like more reckless and just you know more dangerous uh fighting abilities and attitudes towards battles like that um, her and him, they actually worked extremely well together, and um, they actually, in doing so, they helped to, um, when they, oof, I'm sorry, I'm rambling here, folks, I'm, my mind is right here because I'm just so taken by this figure, and this, the sheer detail of it is amazing because that's one thing that I take seriously in the figures themselves is the fact that they need to have the detail. Without the detail, then there's really no feeling in it, but um, during, of course, many missions, but one in particular is the fact that um, they rescued the son of a very well-known crime lord, and um, which, in doing so, would actually help to facilitate a much-needed alliance between what was known as the Hut Clan and the Galactic Republic. And um, over time, when she gained like experience and made a sort of brief return um, to the, um, how can I put this? The more like the head of the group of the, uh, she actually led. A, I'm sorry. I called her the head of the group because um, she acted as a leader of the group when uh, she actually leaded um, the a few of the Rep Republic forces. And it was in that moment where she actually ran into the very well-known Darth Maul. And um, she has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with him more times than I've known, whether it be in the animated series or even in the comic book series, because I know it's the fact that um, they're both dual lightsaber wielders, and that is a battle that I highly recommend watching, whether it be on YouTube or even if you just, you know, watch the Rebel show, because it's still very good, very well written, and I I was taken by it because the sheer action that she put out towards Darth Maul. But um, if it if a, since um, during that battle, um, at the time, Order 66 was still in effect, um, even after the Sith Lord's capture, she uh, was betrayed by um, the captain and the soldiers of the 501st um, Legion, which unfortunately forced her into hiding. Now, um, I don't really want to give too many spoilers you know, over the character because I know there's a lot of history surrounding her because I know that she did grow to become a great um, Jedi warrior. And it's just, um, I'm going to stop that right there. But... There are some fun facts that I did learn about this character that even I didn't know. You know, it's just um, one thing that um, I thought was cool is that when I lost, when I watched the uh, more previously released Star Wars film, you know, where uh, it featured Rey um, in the final battle against the uh, Darth Sidious, it was actually thanks to Ahsoka here where Rey was able to um, stand against him because she acted as another source of inspiration along with her other Jedi brothers and sisters. And um, she's actually a very talented pilot and, um, and leader at the same time because of the fact that um, when she was fighting along the 501st, before Order 66, um, they worked extremely well together, leading on all sorts of missions and just dangerous uh, adventures. I'm not going to lie. And um, she actually, uh, when it came down to it, when the time came over the years, she was actually able to injure one of the most feared Sith warriors in the whole galaxy. Darth Maul. Darth Vader. I can't believe I said Darth Maul because he's not as feared as Darth Vader. My apologies, folks. I am so sorry. For those of you guys who are Star Wars fans out there, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Don't cut my hand off. I need it. I'm sorry. <sighs> I need a drink after that one, folks. 
Are you guys doing good though? I hope you're doing well because you're awesome. Oh boy. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Okay, let me just take a soak of here. Leave it right there. Chill? Chill? Okay. Get the next one. Okay. So. Oh, the small paper right here. I don't know what this is. What is this? Oh, it's it's for Ahsoka. Her instructions. Who needs instructions? I know who she is. Okay, so next up, um, we're gonna sort of step away from the world of uh, lightsabers, you know, and we're gonna take a walk on the. Uh, how can I put this? More sort of human side, if you will, because um, we're going to uh, bring up a sort of a warrior because. In this next one, we're going to in, uh, delve into the warrior files of the Star Wars universe. Now, um, it follows um, the emergence of a lone gunman, if you will. And um, it's the fact that he is in the outer reaches of the galaxy. And um, his history is set sort of after the fall of the Empire. And, of course, before the Force Order was even, like, started or even began. And... The group that this particular individual belongs to, um, he is um, a sort of, he is um, a clan based. Ugh, I'm sorry, my words are getting jumbled again. I keep staring at this figure because I'm so happy to say that I have it, folks. Forgive me. I'm trying to relax. There we go. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, as I said, um, the particular group or uh, clan that this guy belongs to, um, they are clan based. They're clan based ethnic group that's um, sort of comprised of members from multiple species um, all around the galaxy, of course, and uh, by one culture, one code, one creed. And of course, um, one memorable quote, and I'm pretty sure that it falls under the same thing as code and um, like the creed that they live by, because it's basically, um, you know, this. it's basically the word that they all know, the very few words that they know. It's because it's three words in particular. But, ladies and gents, a big wolf pack welcome to Din Djarin, a.k.a. the Mandalorian. That's right, folks. The body shielded by this armor up here. Don't worry, folks. I'll get into uh, his history or as much history that I'm going to give because I'm going to try not to spoil nothing of any sorts. And if I do, I apologize, folks, really. Because I'm here only to act as a good times and nothing more. And, of course, as I said, this is the um, special Black Series, uh, like Ahsoka was. Okay, here, just there, and there. Okay. Good. It's only got two pieces of the Devil's Tape. Ah, it's beauty. Okay, put that right there. there. Okay. Blaster. Uh-oh. No, I need that. Come here. All right. Come on. Yes. Yes. Easy. Easy now. Easy, man. Okay. Let me just get this part. Okay. I'll give you guys a look at it first. Look at that. That is awesome. Now, um, the man known as Mondo, as I said, folks, he is actually a human, um, a human male Mandalorian who actually worked as a bounty hunter during the New Republic era, sporting, of course, the armor that you're seeing here is known as the Beskar armor. And I'm going to give you guys a little history lesson on that one for those who didn't know, just for those who didn't know, because I know there are hardcore Star Wars fans out there who are probably watching or probably going to watch this as a highlight. This is just, you know. Just relax. Don't bite my head off here, folks. Okay. Oh, okay. And, um, of course, as I said, um, I lost my train of thought. The Beskar armor. Yes, he's sporting the, uh, what's known as the Beskar armor here. And, um, a couple of blasters here. As you can see, his little handgun right here. Pew. Just kidding. I wouldn't do that to you. And, of course, the more well-known, uh, marksman rifle of his. I call it the marksman, marksman rifle because homeboy here, he is a marksman. Heck. Now, um, 
what's cool about the armor that he is sporting because not only is it um impervious um not like impervious to blasters the uh, blaster shots but at the same time what's cool about it is that it's almost almost nearly impervious to the blow of a lightsaber yes that's true now um the only terrible thing about it is that um yes it's true while it isn't it is impervious but it's also very heavy and it, it requires the one who is wearing it to have a sort of strong stance and of course skill because you got to be able to move whenever you're being weighed down because if you can't then you're not going to be a very very good asset you know but um a little history a little more history not about the armor but double d here i know i I, I call him Double D because it makes it a little bit more easy, you know, or I could just call him Mondo. But hey, we'll see what happens, right? But um, while it's true that um, he is both, um, you know, well equipped and, you know, shrouded in mystery because of his uh, his history, I ain't gonna lie, because, uh, oh wait, does that open up? Oh, cool! Right? His holster right here, I ain't gonna lie, I just barely found that his holster actually opens and closes. Ooh, yes, that looks awesome. This is the way. Sorry, I got a little bit too much into the Mandalorian. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I love that show. It's a good show. I highly recommend it. But, um, yes, sorry, I was rambling. Let me give him his blaster in his holster. Oh, yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. Does this, um, I thought it came with a strap, but I guess, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. There's actually a piece back here. Does this actually... Wait, 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 whoa, 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 don't drop the blaster now. Don't drop the blaster. That's very, very bad. Hmm. I do not want to bust anything, folks. I really, really don't want to bust anything. But I just found he's got this tiny little hole in his back right here. And I'm assuming that um, the... Uh, Marksman rifle here is supposed to go in there, but I don't want to break nothing. I do not want to separate anything, so we'll work with that in just a second. We'll work with that in just a second. But, um, yes, it's true. As I said, he is shrouded in mystery to others, but um, orphaned as a child um, during the events of the Republic era and, of course, the bombing of his planet. Now, um, he was uh, rescued by the Mandalorian clan and, of course, raised as one of their own to... Um, become one of the more like battle hardened and um at the same time a man of few words because um an extremely at the same time he became an extremely formidable bounty hunter hunter at the same time and um he also has a heart that's one thing that i've come to respect about him because him being a human he's not like a completely heartless you know just killer to pull out a blaster and just you know shoot the first thing that he sees even though he was trained in those ways there was a moment in time where um, he became known for his heart because he was known as a human, which, of course, I'm happy to say. Now, um, as I said, um, he wasn't one to back down from anything, especially when a challenge arose, um, because there was a particular moment in the Mandalorian series where uh, he took on a giant, you know, a giant beast in a mud pile. But I'm happy to say that um, he did do what he needed to, which it was it was a great battle, great series. But um, let me just see here. Now, uh, as I said, what's cool about him is the fact that uh, in the TV series, of course, The Mandalorian, he goes from badass bounty hunter to protector and, of course, father figure. To me, I mean, um, I don't want to spoil anything further. As I said, I just I just want to say it's a great TV series. I highly recommend it. And it's a hell of a ride, folks. I'm not going to lie. I apologize if I can't say that. It's a hell of a ride and definitely worth it. So, uh, with that being said, uh, I want to give you guys some more cool facts uh, that I didn't even know the fact, uh, not just about the Mandalorian here, but about um, others who actually donned the helmet, the T-Visor. Now, um, what's cool about them is that the Mandalorian race has seen many, many battles, whether it be against uh, droids or even the Republic. There's actually, um, like, the more memorable wars that they've been in has actually been against the Jedis. Yes, it's true, folks. Um, I didn't get a chance to speculate on those wars too much because I didn't want to spoil anything. But I highly recommend that uh, you read that series because it is awesome. Or that article, it is a great read. A lot of history behind it. But um, a little shout out, you know, to uh, 
a pair of bounty hunters, which of course are Django and Boba Fett. Um, I mean, I know there are those of you guys who do know this, but for those who don't know, they're not actually Mandalorians. Yes, it's true. Uh, they rock the armor, they rock the helmet, they rock the weaponry, but um, there's one key thing, as I said, um, one key code that the Mandalorian race lives by, and they've broken it, so they've broken it many times, so they were basically disowned from that clan. And of course, that creed and that rule is that you never remove your helmet. You cannot do that. And uh, one thing about Django and Boba, they did it multiple times, so that's basically betraying um, the one like the one creed that you took up and i mean come on now if you're going to be a mandalorian you cannot betray that race because they're very traverse people they're um very formidable they know how to fight they know how to survive and of course um they're great pioneers when it comes down to uh form forging like armor plates or even um you know when it comes down to making the kills when necessary and of course, um, one cool thing about um, a particular lightsaber, which of course was known as the dark saber, was um, actually supposed to act as a weapon to lead the Mandalorian warrior race. Um, there is history around it, surrounding it, but um, it becomes like it's sort of around the fact between uh, Darth Maul and another individual. I cannot remember his name for the life of me, but um, in doing so. The other individual actually took the dark saber and used it for something else other than to unite uh, the Mandalorian race. So, uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen, which I figure um, there's a lot of people out there who speculate that he didn't really necessarily belong because he wasn't Mandalorian. But they say um, whoever wields the dark saber um, is higher than the Mandalorian race because it's supposed to act as a, a sort of beacon or a leader. Oh, man, oh, man. Let me get into this wig. It's killing me here. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay, dokie. Let me see here. There was a way. This is the way. Sorry. Let me see here. Do -do. Dang, the cape got in the way. Nah, it's okay. <laughs> Let me just put him over here. Rest right there for me, Mando. Right there. Rest for me right there. Okay. Okay, folks. This is it. The final piece. Last but not least, if you will. We are going to introduce another key character in the Star Wars universe. Mainly due to the fact that um, he's... Um, I really don't want to spoil this before I bring up the funk, because that's what we're introducing right now, folks, is the funk. I really don't want to spoil nothing, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to. He was just, um, one of the cutest little things, like, in the series. And yes, it's true that even though, um, he was cute and, um, just, like, adorable, it's the fact that, um, he was also very powerful, especially... In the ways of the force because that was one of the more elements in the show uh that sort of caught me off guard because i didn't expect it like really just when i saw it happen just whoa like really <sighs> but a little history about him before before i bring him up before i bring him up it's the fact that uh even though uh when it all started um he was an infant um uh, he was an, uh, an infant to an unnamed alien species who crossed paths with a certain bounty hunter, yes it's true folks, and um, who was hired to track down and capture um, said little tiny individual. And um, he was basically uh, on mission to collect him for the, uh, the remnant, if you will, of the fallen galactic empire. But instead, when push came to shove, it's just he couldn't do it, you know? He couldn't bring himself to... Um, either hurt uh, this little individual or even just, you know, take him to uh, a certain a certain demise or a certain, just a, a bad event, really. So in doing so, he actually became his adopted father and protector. So, ladies and gents, please, another big wolf pack welcome to the child. Yes, it's true, folks. 
the child of the Mandalorian. Sorry. <laughs> and of course, uh, what's cool about this one is that uh, he is not only rocking that little tiny robe of his, but he is also rocking his favorite toy, which of course is the control knob off of one of the joysticks of the uh, Mandalorian ship. This guy is just too good, too cute. There you go. Now, um, this little bundle of joy is a force to be reckoned with, folks, because, um, as I said, he did belong to um, the same um, species as Jedi Master Yoda and, of course, Jedi Master Yaddle. And when he was born, um, he was actually born during the encampment. And that encampment was actually run by mercenaries and, well, unbelievably, still an infant. This guy is actually... Oh, sorry, sorry. He's got a little something in his eye. Sorry about that. Sorry. Okay. He was actually um, at the tender age of 50. Believe it or not, folks, this, this is what 50 years old looks like to his alien race. How does he do it? How, I ask you? What's your secret? Come on, tell me. Oh, sorry. Let me just... I know. The resemblance is uncanny, right? No, no, no. You don't need this. I'll handle this. Now, um, as I said, folks, um... Oh, oh. Okay, and, um, at, uh, it was actually during a, uh, shootout that was actually, um, taking place during the, uh, mercenaries and, of course, a certain bounty hunter by the name of Din Djarin, or a.k.a. the Mandalorian, who actually found him. Now, um, the Mandalorian, he wasn't alone. There was a droid with him who was basically out there to um, eliminate the child. But, as I said, when push came to shove, Mando stepped up, did what was necessary, and um, even though um, he was able to retrieve the target, he, he couldn't bring himself to let go. I mean, yes, it's true, uh, he did... Um, get compensated very, very heavily, you know, and it's just, um, it was just, he couldn't bring himself to allow the child to become hurt. It's just, and uh, during that time, during a daring rescue, the child had actually became uh, the Mandalorian's found link, you know, and uh, being a, a child or a small child, um, he is, he still packs a uh, a pretty big wallop, is when, mainly due to the abilities that he has. And of course, uh, those abilities such as uh, telekinesis, uh, he also comes with the force choke. Yeah, because I know he used it on Cara Dune during a uh, campfire scene. I can't remember which one, but I apologize, folks, if I spoil that right there. And of course, uh, he's even got healing probabilities, he healing powers. And um, the um, cool thing is that... Um, is a um, fun fact sorry is the fact that um he has a thing for swamp toads if you guys haven't seen the series i highly recommend it you'll know why and um his the reason behind the fact that um the remnant however uh was actually looking for the child is because his cells or whatever there was actually a very rare kind that he was rocking and what was cool about them is that they could actually be used to make others um tap into the abilities of the force you know so basically turning people, regular people or other aliens, into force users, force wielders. And that was just crazy. I mean, really. But um, as I said, folks, I don't want to spoil anything, any episodes, nor adventures. But again, if you haven't already, I do suggest that you see it because it's it's just a great. It's called The Mandalorian Series. It's on Disney Plus for those of you guys who do have it. And the reason that I decided to include Ahsoka in tonight's episode was the fact that... Um, Whenever season two drops, she's going to be featured in season two. I'm highly, highly recommending that you guys uh, look forward to that because, hey, I am too. Because the series um, is going to air uh, October 30th of this month. And I'm I'm so, so happy because I'm looking forward to seeing all the returns. And I've seen the trailer and I was just blown away. And um, I do appreciate you guys for joining me this evening. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the stream right there. If you like, feel free to hit the follow button when it appears, or if you like, uh, feel free to sample one of these videos when they appear. Um, I am working on another gameplay video of uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Make sure you look forward to that. And um, also, 
make sure you look forward to next week's episode because it is going to be another power packed episode folks and um uh, as i said the follow button is going to appear here and two other videos right here and um until next time guys uh stay safe stay awesome stay weird stay yourselves lavase las manos por favor and please if you guys wear the masks okay peace <laughs>